Hi, my name is Alejandro Eda, and welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. Welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. Welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. It's an absolute pleasure to have you here. Pleasure is mine. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so before we uh, speak about your brand new film, which is coming out soon in the United States, uh, could you tell me a bit about how you first got into acting? What, what was your, your journey into your career? Well, um, I'm from Mexico. I was born and raised there, and I moved 10 years ago to LA to pursue my acting career. I, I did a study in my university as an actor in Mexico City. But, um, you know, I guess I was just following my intuition and wanted to explore and expand my world. And I found LA to be a giving place for me in my in my circumstance and it was a world that I've never had in Mexico where I was surrounded by just actors and rock stars and poets and and singers so somehow I'm I'm in a world where everybody's doing the same when where everybody has the same language and the same hunger and I really connected with the city and you know I started of course you, you don't start acting just because you land in LA you have to work yourself up and 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 you know it takes time and i've been here for 10 years and until now it's when i'm seeing the fruits from the trees you know it's been 10 years of of, of planting the seeds and now it's it's fruit season so i'm enjoying it i'm taking it uh, as it goes and i'm very 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 lucky and blessed definitely so can you talk about some of the the first roles you you had he, the business here is divided by union work and non-union work. So if you're a member of the SAG, which is the Screen Actors Guild, you are, you're working union, right? So when you're nobody, uh, you have to, you're a non-union actor, which means you work in small bits of projects. And I started doing that. And my first gigs, I was actually the pizza boy for Domino's Pizza. Oh, really? <laughs> and those were my first commercials. And I did uh, a few of them, actually. And yeah, I was the, the Domino's pizza delivery boy uh, face for a few campaigns. And that led for me to go into audition for a, a union um, commercials. And I started doing Toyota, which is a brand, a company of car, right? Toyota. And I, I started just, you know, just as, as, as the ABC of acting is in here, it's you starting community place, you know, in your own theater companies in school. And then you go past, you know, the all those commercials, uh, non-union or union. And then from the commercials, you kind of transition to TV if you're lucky enough and, and you know, you work hard. That happened to me. I booked my first TV show uh, in 2013, 14. It was a TV show uh, by FX uh, called The Bridge. Oh, and it's a fantastic show. Fantastic show. Actually, my friend here, actually, Luis, he was also part of the cast. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> he, was also, he was also in that show, and uh, yeah, it's a fantastic show. Um, so after, after the breach, then yeah, another TV show happened, but actually American Made came, you know, we shot this movie two years ago. Yeah. And pretty much it's my first movie I've made, and... It was pretty crazy to have a first movie with Tom Cruise, especially such a big movie and with a big role. So I was very nervous. Yes, <laughs> I was very nervous. So um, speaking about the bridge, did you? Um, the role seemed to be quite physical. Did you ever get hurt when you were on set at all? And people sort of Absolutely. hitting you and yeah. To tell the truth, I did. Um, you know, not nothing serious, but I like to do my stunts. It's fun. I'm, uh, I like. I'm a, a bit of. Um, you know, I like physical action. I, um, I like, I like hands-on things. So, I remember I told the producer, I said, "Don't, don't, don't, uh, you know, waste your money on a stunt. Let me do it." Uh, he goes, "No, no, no, it's it's for a safe." And I go, "No, no, come on." So we did, and pretty much everything in the bridge I was myself. And there were really hard uh, scenes, especially the fighting with the Mianbichir. It was one time that I didn't. I quite didn't, um, I guess, calculate my, my head. So when, when he hits me, I hit myself in the floor 
in the cement, so I, I had a big bump here. And then in the torture scene, one day um, they used real handcuffs, and, and they were old school handcuffs, like from the 40s. So they were very uncomfortable and very tight, and I had them for like six, seven hours straight. So I, I, my, my wrists were, were, were busted. And then the makeup girl, when they did my makeup in my eye, somehow the prosthetic was touching my inside of the ear, of the eye. So after 12 days of shooting of the, of, with the makeup, when I took it off, my eye was red and swollen. Oh. But you couldn't see it because it was already swollen from the makeup. So until they took <laughs> it off, they're like, oh, wow, <laughs> it's red. We, we don't need and, this anymore, uh, just, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, but those things are normal, you know, it, it happens, it's part of it. It's, it's actually fun, you know, you have to feel a bit. Absolutely, because, um, yeah, a lot of your roles involve fighting or guns and physical stuff. So would you also yeah. be sort of interested in doing more sort of dangerous stunts, um, you know, hanging off a helicopter or jumping off things through explosions or that kind of thing? Would you try that? I would love to try it, yes, yes. I mean, if everything goes safe, you know, I don't want to die yet. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I would love to try, of course, and learn new things and tricks, sure. Absolutely. So um, I watched uh, Lethal Weapon. I was a big fan of the original movies, mm -hmm. and I saw you in an episode of that as well. That was another torture scene, but not me. I had I had to torture someone. Yeah, it's really better. violent, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, so after that, I must talk about you were in season two of Fear the Walking Dead. Uh, I think you're in yes. four episodes. And um, you got to play a character that uh, predominantly spoke Spanish as well. So what, what was it like being in such a huge production? Um, that was a really fun show. The, the things that I enjoy was, first of all, that. Um, I like the, the that that it, it was genuine to the to the geography. So if Fear the Walking Dead was gonna be shot in Mexico, I really enjoyed the fact that the people that were in Mexico spoke Spanish. You know, yes, we I mean we in Mexico we we're very bilingual, but not everybody. And depends of your you know your upbringing. And it's in in the case of Marco, my character, you know he he didn't went he didn't go to school. He, didn't, he wasn't bilingual, he was a street guy. So it was nice for me to, to even from the audition, to, to find out that this guy was just talking 100% in Spanish um, with the lingo of Tijuana, slang. And then, you know, whatever we created during the shoot, but um, it was really fantastic. And I had to, I had the, you know, the nice thing was that I was able to be in my country working. So I was in Mexico shooting with my people, my, you know, it's Mexico, it's, it's my home, even though I'm not there, but it's where my heart is. And, um, and Fear the Walking Dead brought me that and I spent a few months there shooting and it was a fantastic opportunity to, to be there and, and hang out with my friends and people. And then, and then Marco was just this great character who, who had this sense of humor and, and just kind of like, you know, he has, a, a lot of confidence. So he will walk out like, the, you know, he owns the streets and he will make jokes. There was a lot of scenes that they cut that I talked to Nick, uh, the character Nick, uh, in semi-English, like Spanglish. And it was so funny because I used to make these crazy invented words. And I guess, I don't know, they didn't understood, or I don't know why, but they cut those scenes and it was pretty fun. So I enjoyed the process of that show. It was a big production, sure. Um, you know, I, I wasn't aware of how big the world zombies is around with fans and, and people really dig it. Uh, it was my first time watching a show like that. Um, and it's, it's pretty fun, you know, it has its, it has its magic. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, I'm a zombie now in the history of the books. I, I, I didn't die, I'm just a zombie. So that's a cool thing. It's always good. And The Walking Dead has a huge fan base around the world. Have you um, had an increase in people contacting you since you've been on the show? Yes, yes. There's been a few, um, a few people who, who complain about my character just speaking in Spanish, saying like they don't like to read subtitles. And then there's people who love it because they say, yeah, that's very genuine. 
and and that's you know those guys in Tijuana are like that. So, you know, I I I don't take anything personal. I I like to talk to people. I mean, I'm human. I mean, before before an before I'm an actor, I'm a human. So you know, we have we are humans, and and I'm not I'm not my profession. I am me as a person. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I can't wait any longer. I must talk about American Made. Um, it's already out in the UK. I absolutely loved it. You loved it? Yeah, I, I really did love it. And um, the movie's released on the, the 29th of September in the United States. That's uh, right. For anyone that doesn't know anything about it, can you give me a brief overview of the film? Well, I mean, yes. Basically, it's a, it's a real story of an American pilot, of, you know, uh, common pilot from TWA, which was an old school airline. And it's played by the, this, this fella named Barry, uh, Barry Seal. It's played by Tom Cruise. And this is by the end of the 70s, uh, early 80s. So basically this guy got hired as an informant for the CIA to get some intel. So basically his plane had a hidden camera that he will snap photos uh, flying very low, which he had this gift. He was a very, very good pilot, um, a protege. So that caught the attention of a few fellas in South America, specifically in Colombia, about this gringo, you know, this American guy who was flying every weekend back and forth from the, the South America to the US. Now, of course, this kind of rang a bell in their ears because that's exactly what they needed. And these guys, you know, eventually became the Medellin cartel which by that time they were already doing that. I mean, they were already having an alliance and building a Coke lab um, in Colombia. So what they just needed was they had the product, but they needed someone to, you know, transport it. And in this case, in this real life event, they happened to meet Barry Seal, this really crazy pilot who has was fearless and everybody's life changed, not only them, but the world. I mean, those were the 80s in Miami, New York, in New Jersey. Imagine that. And that was all provided by these fellas, specifically by one pilot. <laughs> you know, um, having watched the, the film, um, if I didn't know it was a true story, I wouldn't have believed it at all. But it's, it's incredible, the stuff that, um, that he survives for a start, just even when he's flying the plane and trying to take off and all that kind of thing. It's incredible that, you know, he lasted as long as he did in those really dangerous conditions. Totally. And you know what's the fun fact is that those um, those airstrips yeah. were actually the real airstrips were that were used in the 80s for the drug lords in Medellin, Colombia. So we went actually to the real roads. Now, this all this, you got to think about this, this all these um, airstrips, the government had to uh, come with uh, cement and rocks and just to destroy them and with like pop, pop, because they couldn't allow having these uh, illegal airstrips in the jungle just being there able for people to use them with their planes so they were destroyed and when they did the um, the location scouting they found some of them and they had to redo them oh wow the government was kind of like well you gotta be fast because we don't want to have this kind of like when you leave this runway made nicely for someone to take advantage of it. Like this is this is still present. You know, these stories. Well, when we are turning around, there's someone probably flying coke <laughs> right now. So it was crazy to be in the exact location in the exact uh, air 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 jungle air strips that the actual Medellin cartel used to flu uh, coke and. That was Tom Cruise flying that plane. That was us in there. And it was amazing to be in that same field. So yeah, pretty much it's a wild ride. Outrageous. The, um, the airstrip itself, they were so short. It's incredible that a plane actually managed to take off because there's like a runway and then there's just trees. So if you don't take off in time, you crash. Exactly. And that's why, that's why um, Will Berry in the movie emphasizes of the weight. You know, how important is the weight for the plane? And there's a funny scene, right, with the with the fat guy. Yeah. That, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I found that people or the audience don't know, but this is a very funny movie, right? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, well, they, they should. Like, it's, it's a very, very entertaining movie as well. And there's, very, the, um, there's action in it and there's 
there's scenes that will get your adrenaline pumping, but then there's also these fantastic comic moments as well. And speaking of which, of course, your character, Jorge, is a, a Colombian drug trafficker, um, and he works with Pablo Escobar, the infamous uh, criminal mastermind, if you like. Um, but you, your character also brings a lot of humour to the role as well. Is it? I thought so, yeah. He, he was slightly more light-hearted than some of the others. Yes, I mean, sometimes that's what we wanted to achieve um, with Doc and Tom. Just the fact that, first of all, all the world, as of now, because we shot this two years ago, but as of now, everybody knows who Pablo Escobar is, right? You have Narcos, you have all these movies about him. Right. And, and Pablo Escobar in his life was a showman. He wanted to be him seen. You know, he wanted to be on stage. He wanted to take the microphone. So Jorge Ochoa, my character, was the opposite. You know, they came, he, his family comes from a, a very wealthy family in Medellin, Colombia. They are very Catholic and they didn't want to be put into that kind of, you know, story. He they don't wanna I don't wanna be in, involved with these people. So they took care a lot about cleaning their last name, cleaning their image as a family. So they were really behind the scenes. And in this movie what they wanted to brought was the real deal of how Jorge was the money guy behind Pablo. So so Jorge to help Pablo to build that kind of like cartel idea. Um, but he was always behind the scenes. And in this movie, they want him to be more like the protagonist with Barry, more as a businessman. And I think that worked a lot because Jorge in real life, which is his life, he's in Medellin, he's, yeah. yeah. He, was in, yeah he was not a bloody guy. He was not uh, a guy who will have a gun and be ready to shoot someone. Not at all. He will, uh, he will be like that. I'm more a businessman, more talkative. He will, you know, process with you more in your mind than with a weapon. And I think, I don't know, I have to tell you the truth, Sarah, I haven't seen the movie. <laughs> you know more than me. <laughs> huh? It's very good. You should watch it. I, I'm watching it. I'm traveling on Monday to Mexico to watch it in the premiere in Mexico. So I'll, <laughs> I'll see it the first time in my country with my people and my friends and family. Amazing. So, but, but I know we played a little comedy with him and I hope it shows. Like I said, I'm 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 excited that you liked it, and I'm excited to talk about something that that I haven't seen. You know, I haven't seen that full two hours. I've saw just bits of bits. Yeah. Well, for me, it's one of my favorite films of the year so far. So as soon as I got out of the the movie theater, I was just you know tweeting about it right away to let everyone else know they must go and see this movie. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> um. So what? Was there any uh, different kind of challenges playing a real life person? Yes and no. Um, from from the start, Tom said, "This is not a biopic. You know, this is not that. This is this is not me playing the bio the biographic movie of Barry Seal. I'm not gonna look like him. So this is it's not like you have to look or be Jorge Ochoa. It's just based upon." So that, that, that was a little, you know, it gave us freedom. I personally love biopic. I love to look like, you know, like Jamie Foxx did with Ray Charles. I love that. I love that. I mean, I don't know. But, um, but you know, I have to respect what they wanted to do. And, and, and I follow the guidelines. And what I just wanted to do was to be the most authentic as possible, knowing that this guy existed and, and, and also, trying to bring, you know, I'm from Mexico, I'm not from Colombia, so I have to adapt my accent, my voice, my mannerisms, and even the vocabulary of that time, because this is the 80s, they use different words as 2000s, you know, as, yeah. as we progress, we change. We have now hashtags and posts and these new <laughs> words that it's just six, they don't exist before, so, so it, yeah, it was a nice research, and I learned a lot, I learned a lot. This is this is by the time Narcos came out um, when we were shooting it. And I didn't want to watch Narcos just because I didn't want to be influenced by another idea of one yeah. that I was researching. So what I did was I researched the real deal. I was in Colombia. I asked production to flew me beforehand to just be acquainted with the accent. And I read my books. Um, 
I have family in Colombia, so they they took me around to to see more of like where did the Ochoas live, where was the ranch, where was Pablo's house, just to be a little bit more familiarized. And that was my thing. And I honestly don't know what the people in Colombia are gonna think about, <laughs> but uh, but I hope they 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 found it respectful and with you know. I did it, I tried to do my best with the possibilities that I had in the time that I had. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, how did you first get the role in the film? Because it's, it's a huge movie. Was there an extensive casting process? Um, probably yes. I, I know for friends who auditioned for it. Um, it was a regular process, I mean, an audition process, right? And I know they looked 20s year old guys, 30s, 40s, 50s. So that's a big range of you. You audition for it too. The same. Okay, you see, my friend auditioned for. I audition for the same for the same role actually. Really? Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, they were looking for. I mean, they were looking at tons of actors, right? And you know, you have now act. You can send self tape. So this and you know the dog dog Lyman's office are in New York. So they saw actors from New York, from Spain, from Mexico from LA, maybe Miami, I don't know, but I know it was a very big roaster. Um, I just, to, be, to tell the truth, this story is amazing. I just had one audition. I went in my audition. Um, I, I felt good, I was prepared. And then I got a call from my manager saying that, that, um, that I was the number one pick, but Doug, Doug Lyman wanted to Skype with me. And then Tom is like, well, let me see the tape. And when he saw the tape, he's like, no, that's the guy. Amazing. They just picked me like that. <laughs> no, <laughs> no callback or anything. <laughs> and then next, next day I'm like flying to Atlanta to meet these fellas and do a script read. So that was very, very wild, just, just like that. Yeah, that's incredible. So, what was uh, so Tom Cruise has been on the Sarah Ray Connell show before. Um, I met him at the Jack Reacher two premiere. But what was okay. it? What was it like to work with Tom? Listen, Tom, it's is such a professional gentleman. Those two words. He's professional, way way professional, and a, an extraordinary gentleman. And in those two things, you know, you have the. The, the passion of his career and the well manner of his personality. He, I don't, you met him, and to tell the truth, on set, I was, it was not much about, I was learning for him as an actor, but I was learning for him as a person and, and, and how giving he is while he's, you know, he's, he's the captain of the boat. He really is. He's taking everybody there. He makes, he makes, he makes sure everybody in the boat is safe. He's committed, he knows what, what what you have to do, and he's just there. And, and it's 40 years of filmmaking, 40 years of doing movies. He knows a lot, and it's incredible to see how much he knows. And why will he do that? He just thinks like, he thinks like an actor, like an editor, like a producer, like a director, and he's everything in his mind. So, and even he thinks like an audience too. Everything, everything is about the audience, everything is about the audience. So I did learn a lot about that. And I took that, you know, I, it grew a lot in me, a lot of uh, huevos, <laughs> balls. <laughs> balls. I, I, I grew balls working with, with Tom. <laughs> yeah, he, he's a great man. He's a great actor and a great person. Absolutely. Fantastic. Now, in, um, so for anyone that hasn't seen the film yet, because of course it's not out in some countries, uh, right. tell them why they should all go and see it. Well, because they will watch my beautiful face. Nah, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, come on, it's just an obvious thing. It's a, it's, it's, it's a brand new Tom Cruise movie. And what I will suggest more than that is for, your, for all of you who are fans of him, you have a great group of talented people behind it. You have one of the best cinematographers working today, which is Don Cesar Charlione, um, City of God. Doc Lyman is a genius director, just a unique mind. Very unique, very, very, just makes you, just gives you movies that you don't see often. And that's a treat, you know? 
you're gonna pay the same money for every movie you I mean, watch in a cinema. Might as well watch something fresh. And I think American Made gives you that. Uh, I know that um, you know it's produced by great. You have Brian Grazer and Ron Howard producing this picture. Um, the soundtrack I heard is fantastic. You told me you enjoy the, the music. I've yeah. been. I, was, um, so, I, I looked up some of the songs on Spotify, so I just sort of listened to them. Oh yeah. Yeah. They're really good, right? Yep, absolutely. Yeah, there's a there's a Beethoven, uh, the fifth Be Beethoven, uh, in one of the scenes that plays. There's a yeah. classical. So I invite people to watch it because it's gonna be just a, a fun, entertaining ride, and you will see a Tom Cruise different that you've seen him before, and that's very appealing. And you'll meet new faces. You know, there's new actors and also well-known actors like Dom Hall and Lola and Jesse Plemons. So it's fantastic. I I think it's. Like you said, it's a well run movie and one of your favorites from this year. Absolutely. Now, in addition to movies, you've also uh, worked with some video games as well, including Uncharted 4 yeah. and uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands as well. Uh, is, are there any differences between working on a video game and a movie? Yes, very much so. Unless, I, I guess, I haven't worked in uh, like superhero movies or you know those fantasy TV shows which you're actually like the planet of the apes for example you're working um uh, in a i forgot motion capture so video games are done in and motion capture movies are done in in, in, in real in motion in sets but um it is different it's a lot of it's like doing it's like being a kid uh playing with imaginary uh, imagine in an imaginary world because you don't see anything there's just cameras a lot of green stuff and and props that are not real props it's just like kind of like rubbers and 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 shiny objects or like markers that they give you to pretend it's a knife or a weapon so you have to use everything and it's really cool like i enjoy and uncharted is a game of action you have to make some jumps and stunts and fights Everything works like a choreography. Everything works like you're on a stage, like you're performing for an audience. And that is really, really cool. And then knowing that you're not gonna look as you, that they can manipulate you as whatever you 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 know they want, that's really exciting because it's now not it's not about you, it's about your your physicality, your voice, and 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 like the dance that you with the other actors do. That's a really cool thing. I I, I wish I could do it again. I have a great relationship with Naughty Dog, the company, and you know, in future video games, I would love to do it. It's fun. With the, with the Reckon one, I just did voice. We didn't do mo uh, motion capture, which is my voice in a studio. And I did a Bolivian. I play a Bolivian guy. I had to learn to. I don't even know how I did that, but um, <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. It's it's weird. It's fun and and. Yeah, I mean, imagine playing with yourself in the video game. It's weird. I love it. Yeah. So have you actually played those games as well? Yeah, yeah, I have them. Yes. Oh, fantastic. Yes. So uh, recently Netflix released um, uh, a new movie called Reality High uh, that you you star in. Yesterday. Jim, yesterday. Fantastic. Um, can you, I've not had the chance to watch that yet. I did watch Sundown, which you're in briefly. Um, which is also on Netflix. Uh, but can you tell everyone a bit about um, Reality High? Reality High. Reality High. It's a teen. Um, it's a teen movie for for young teens in high school, and it's a very current situation. You know, with the whole social media, the followers, the everybody has a phone, and they you know document everything and who is who and how you dressed and you know the whole drama of high school. So it's pretty much about that, but it has a very good message. Um, my friend Luis and I yesterday the screen, and I invited him over to watch it, and he liked it. It's a very well-made movie. It's made by one of my very good friends, the director uh, Fernando Lebrija. He's from Mexico, and I've worked with him in two movies already. So when Reality High happened, when he he said, "Oh, I you know I want to put you in, but you know there's no roles." So suddenly one role or something just pop up and he called me that day. I went on set and shoot the scene in two hours and that was it. And I play Paco, which I don't know, they put me big Jim, but in my character is Paco. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's weird, I don't know why. But um, 
it was very nice. And the movie is very good. I, I like that it has a message. I like the diversity of the characters. I like that it's not your, yeah, I mean, it's a fun movie. It's not a serious movie, but it, it, br it brings something to young people that I think is needed. And you don't, wouldn't you agree? It was yeah. good. It was, yeah, it yeah. was good. The cast diverse. The know? diverse cast is very important. The, 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 the main ladies is two two women. No? Is yeah, the two. Yeah, women are, girl, are, are, are the a black girl. And yeah, are the lead Latino girl. Right. That's so, good. Yeah, I, I think there's gonna there's gonna be a lot of um, people are gonna really relate to it. I mean, young young kids and and hopefully, it, you know, it gets you a few laughs and you have a good time and. You learn a little bit about, you know, what's good and what's bad in those high school years. Definitely. I'm looking forward to watching it. Um, a few years ago, you also wrote um, a short called Inspector Sanchez. Um, oh, yeah. is, is writing something you'd like to get back to at some point? Yes. Um, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm not the writer who will do this, you know, put everything down in a script. Yeah. But I'm... I'm the writer who collaborates. I'm very good with ideas. I'm very good with with making a story happen. So, Improv. Im, so improvise. Here, my friend Luis de Bese, he's the producer and star of a movie that it will screen this, hopefully this year or next year, because it's almost done. Yeah. And it's a movie called Feliz Año Tijuana, which means Happy New Year, Tijuana. He's the main guy and the star. And we did this movie in okay. six six days. Yeah. In real time, because we had to do it real time for us to be in order to shoot the new year. Like oh, actually, right. you year actually filmed our new year. So we shot the movie in six days, real time, with six people. It was four actors and two crew members for $6,000. Wow. Magnificent. A feature length film. And it has has a very, very, very amazing, uh, we did a movie, uh, a special screening with 300 people, I don't know, how many people? Uh, five. 500? Yeah. 500 people the in, the, theater, in the movie yeah. theater, in the Egyptian theater in Hollywood. They all loved it, it's crazy. And there was no script, it's full on improvisation. And Alejandro did amazing. That's, no. it's gonna be one of his, no, he's this guy. at one time, no, but you part two, like at one time you would see Alejandro in this, in this movie and you're gonna be like, you know, he, he was just fresh of the boat from from American May, so he was like charged. This guy, yeah. As, as, as yeah. soon as I finished American yeah. May, I went. So I'm, imagine I did a 90, 90 million dollar movie, yeah, cut to six thousand dollar movie, <laughs> right one after the other. That's that's why I'm saying like you, you have to love what you do, and it doesn't matter what it is if if you if you if you're passionate and you have your heart and will in it, and. I, I really want you, Sarah, to watch this movie one day. Yeah, let me know. Tijuana. It's okay. guerrilla style. I mean, there's no cables, there's no lights. The director is an amazing director who uses one camera. He didn't speak he didn't speak Spanish. And he was in Mexico shooting a movie in Spanish. Uh, no script. There was an idea. And everything that Luis did was 100 percent improv with the people around in the streets and just Three more actors, which is a fellow, my, me, myself, and and Kristen, and Anelis. So we're really excited. I mean, I hope uh, Mexican festivals reach out to us, or you know, if we can put it in the theaters, English it will be British great. Festivals. British festivals, yeah. If you have a yeah, if you love, uh, yeah, actually, yeah, we can send it to London. Send it, to, send send that over here. I'll just show it to everybody. I'll just invite everybody yeah. to my well, not everybody to my house. Yeah, I'll send Luis your email so he can be in contact. He's the producer. Yeah, yeah please do it. He's the boss. That'd be really good. Yeah. So I'm very much looking forward to watching that. Yeah, please, please, you will enjoy it. It's very yeah. funny. Because the great thing is that, you know, um, a budget doesn't necessarily indicate what the quality of a film will be like anyway. You know, the, the important thing is to have that passion for a project you're working on. And it could have a zero, it could have zero budget or $250 million. And, you know, it's just about working on stuff you love. Exactly. And with the people that you love and admire as well. It's very important to work with, with colleagues you admire. Well, you know it, you know it, you... It's, it's, it's really that you become a family, so you want to be well with the family. And it's important who your key players and your, you know, friends around are. 
Absolutely. Um, so you've you've worked on so many things lately. Um, you've also got coming up a Lifetime original movie called Cocaine Godmother. Yes. That you're starring in that alongside Catherine Zeta Jones. Can you tell me a bit about that? Has it started filming yet? We did start it, and we already finished it. Oh. We went to Vancouver uh, in uh, June, June and July. We were shooting the movie in Vancouver. We wrapped already. Uh, we finished it, and it's another true story about Griselda Blanco, which is known as the cocaine godmother. Same genre, you know, it's the 80s. Basically, what um, what Escobar or you know the cartel of Medellin will send to to Miami, Griselda will distribute. So they were business associates as well, and the fact. I guess that now everybody wants to do that story uh, because I heard Salma Hadjik wanted to do it, Jennifer Lopez, Eva Longoria, and Catherine was actually behind this project for like three years ago. Just been falling and falling apart, but she really loved this story. And I guess because it's a very strong life story of a woman to go through that, to be raised in those circumstances as a young age, to be uh, sexually assaulted by your mom and your mom being your pimp, you know? And so she grew up in a very rough, rough world uh, in Colombia. And that led for her to kind of like had a, a, a dark life full mm -hmm. of ups and downs. But I mean, the, the things she did Illegally, but still, they, I mean, she became a huge, huge, huge powerhouse. And a woman to be that, that yeah, was, of course, nobody will, will believe it. And my character, I play Rudy, which is also a true, you know, based, it's a, it's a true character, it's a true person. He's actually in jail right now. Okay. <laughs> uh, his name is Rivi. Uh, uh, but they, we, I guess we couldn't use Rudy. We use Rudy, and I was his right hand man. I was his enforcer. I was I was her her, I was her hitman. I was her confidant, and people will say that I was actually her real husband because I had this great connection with her. But I was her employee. You know, I took care of her security, her kids, and managed everything about the business. And it was a great role. Uh, Catherine is a fantastic person, a great, great actress and a great woman. She's gorgeous. I love her. Um, the director behind this is Guillermo Navarro, which is his first feature debut. Uh, but he's, you know, one of the top best cinematographers in the world. You know, Pants Labyrinth, Hellboy, everything. Uh, so and he's from Mexico. So for me, it meant a lot. I was more nervous working for Guillermo than anybody as of now in my career working with guillermo for me was something deep. i was like so uh, intimidated by i don't know why he was yeah I, I guess i just i just i just wanted to do so much such a, such a good job that i wanted him to impress guillermo navarro you know but in a good will i mean you know i i love him he's like i see him like uh a father figure, it's a great man. So we did this movie, it's fantastic, it's great, it's very dramatic, it's very dark. Um, I, 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 I think it comes out in January, Okay. So pretty soon. And uh, I don't know the name is gonna be, I, as of now it's called Cocaine Godmother, it could change to different names. But um, it's definitely a movie worth checking out and uh, I'm happy with my, with my character, I really enjoyed it. Great cast, and uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. <laughs> and so, um, have you got any other projects in the pipeline at the moment that you could tell me about? Well, we'll see. I'm I'm studying. Oh wow! <laughs> if this if this happens, I'll let you know. <laughs> well, best of luck with whatever that is. Are there any yeah. um, Are there any roles that you'd like to play, or types of movies you'd like to be in—a horror film, a comedy, a musical? Is there anything? Have you got like a, a, a wish list of types of films you'd like to be in, or types of characters you'd like to play? 
Uh, yes, I think so. I, I don't have a written list, to tell you the truth. It's more of my... my Up here, yeah. <laughs> yeah, everything. You know, I would love to do a Western. I would love to do uh, even a, a, like a black and white movie, uh, like The Artist. Remember how they were like dancing and, and having like all those cool Hollywood movies? I would love to do that. I would love to play a boxer. I would love to be a rock star. So yes, everything, you know, I mean, I'm a charro, a mariachi. Yeah, so many, many, many things. It's the sky is the limit. And that's, that's the good thing about this. There's stories every second in all parts of the world. So yeah, I, I actually want to, to travel the world, learning stories, betraying different people and you know, endless things, whatever. Fantastic. Now, where can people find you online on social media? Um, my name, uh, Alejandro Eda, I, I will pop out, I, I'm sure. And if not, Alejo, which is A-L-E-J-O, underscore, and my last name, E-D-D-A. Okay. And I only have Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. That's it. Don't, don't, I don't have the more, more things. <laughs> You're not on MySpace. <laughs> no, I quit MySpace. <laughs> I think I think MySpace quit us. I think so, right? <laughs> and Messenger. Yeah, it's all gone. It's very sad. There'll, there'll be films about that one day, I'm sure. Um, right. So, finally, have you got any messages uh, for your fans, for anyone watching the Sarah O'Connell show around the world? Ah, well, I... I, I... Okay, my fans. I don't have fans. I have friends. <laughs> maybe you have fans too. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Yes, maybe. Yes, yes. My mom is a fan. Oh, she's a fan. My mom is a fan. I'm a fan. You're, you're, you're. No, Sarah, you're, you're Sarita. You're my friend, Sarita. <laughs> no, thank you, thank you, Sarah, for this this great space, this opportunity. I love to talk to to friends and and colleagues and just 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 people who love cinema and who love stories and and who are passionate about finding the, the, the notes of, of this profession and this career and this business as well. So thank you, because thanks to you, we get to share our stories. And thanks for putting us out in the map in London or in other parts of the world. So to all my friends and fans and, and more friends, uh, thank you for your support, your love. I guarantee you're gonna love American Made. I really guarantee it and uh go watch it watch it twice bring two dates and talk to me if you enjoy uh you know the whole movie and 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 my character jorge ochoa yeah thank you thank you so much for your time it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you uh, american maids of fantastic incredible movie um this as i said earlier unbelievable you won't believe the stuff you're watching and it really happened um so i strongly encourage everyone to go watch it when it's released um for everyone watching at home thank you for watching uh, be sure to share subscribe give the video a big thumbs up and i'll see you all again soon for another episode of the sarah o'connell show bye ciao ciao sarah thank you thank so you. much for your time have a great day bye